Oh, you're gonna be fine! <laughs> I'm- I'm sure- I'm sure that I will do okay, but I'm still nervous. <laughs> I've- I've been practicing like crazy, I have set multiple new records just in the process of de-resting to run this event, so I know that- I know that I'm qualified to showcase this game probably more than anyone else in the world, but just, I'm just, just casual nervous records. anyway. <laughs> You're gonna do great. But welcome. Deep breath. <laughs> You're gonna do totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Um... Do I just start? Yep. Am I good to go? D whatever works for you. You can do a countdown. You can have your wonderful commentator do the countdown. Hi, everyone. I'm the commentator. I yes, this is Sabera, <laughs> my friend, who learned the game for the sake of commentating today. <laughs> yes, I have been playing this game for about one week. Uh, Dama has yes. taught me a lot. I can't do any of it, but I, I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just go. And it's not a speed run, but it's gonna be like a speed run anyway, because there's a set, it's just a set length of time. So it's not like it can take longer. <laughs> All right. All right. In uh, three, two, one, and go. Good luck. Thank you. So I'll skip cutscenes so that we don't take as much time. Um, this is a mode of this game where you play all the levels back to back and your score is cumulative. Um, the score is mostly is mostly based on collecting these hearts, big hearts and little hearts, and they have a combo. So like each little heart, the first one is worth one, the second one is worth two, the third one is worth three, and so on. And for big hearts, the first one is worth 25, the second one is worth 50, and so on. Uh, there but are... if you die, uh, oh, yeah. you don't really lose score, but you do drop your combo. So it's devastating to your score most of the time. Um, there are also these coins that combo by 1,000s. So the first mm -hmm. one is worth 1,000, the second is worth 2,000. Um, fun fact about those, uh, the code actually calls them secret bananas. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be trying to collect a bunch of those secret bananas. They don't look anything like bananas, but they are secretly bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what makes them secret bananas. Um, this is the maximum possible score for this level. Um, but everyone, everyone who knows this level well enough can do this score. It's very, this starts you out very straightforward. Uh, there's not really much to it other than knowing which lane has the most stuff for you to get. Yeah. So, same with this next level. There's not really, there's no obstacles. There's one extra scoring component introduced because there are teleports that you go through, which are worth 100 and scale up. Um, but it's, again, just collect the stuff. Don't miss things. It's not dangerous yet. <laughs> It's not dangerous yet. One thing, uh, one thing that I actually noticed just earlier today while I was messing around with this game is after after our protagonist magical girls herself, um, <laughs> she on her jacket on her left arm there's a little mirror of Venus patch, and I think that's so cool. I never noticed it before. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of little details in this game because I had to skip the first cutscene. You don't get to see her room. But there's a lot of um, references to other games, movies, other things that the devs are just fans of or took inspiration from. There's like posters up on her wall that are like really abstract looking because that's the sort of style of the game. But they, they're they meant to reflect what, uh, like a real poster of a real game. So, uh... I, this is the level where we use the Wheel of Fortune tarot card to pull out a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now that we're on a motorbike instead of a skateboard, there are a few new things that we can do. Um, one is if the road is wide enough, uh, you see Dama juking to the sides, um, you'll get 50 points for a slide um, if you move to the side and then switch back. Um, additionally, if you sweep close enough to an obstacle, you'll receive 50 points for a risky. Um, and here are these boosts. Um, also, uh, also get bonus points in combo. Um, Dama has been doing some maneuvers to get uh, multiples of those boosts on each boost section. Um, but the, um, the thing about riskies and slides in particular is that they do not combo. Every risky and every slide, they're always worth 50 points, period. 
um, but they still add a lot to your score. Um, in a lot of places, so you do you try to like go close to these trims to pick up those riskies, because um, this is like hundreds of points, sometimes even thousands of points that you're leaving on the table otherwise. I also saw the Doki Doki Rush. That's what nice. this level is called. The next level is called Fighting Hearts, and it's the first level that includes uh, quick time events. Oh yeah, the timing prompts in this. Um, timing mm -hmm. prompts. Um, you have three different grades that you can get on them. OK is worth 50, good is worth 100, and perfects are worth 250. But uh, amusingly, uh, the um, windows on the perfects are actually pretty forgiving. Um, so this is actually one of the least intensive timing exercises in this game, because <laughs> moving around with good timing and good alignment to pick up collectibles is actually harder than getting perfects on these timing prompts. Um, oh. <laughs> it happens. Oh no! Uh, in in this part, there's uh, three of these timing prompts uh, that happen while you're moving around as well, and so you're trying to like get the prompts on uh, while you're still collecting everything and getting in line to get the coins or secret bananas or whatever you call them. Um, and it's actually, honestly, it's very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was very good. Can I oh, go ahead? We can talk about frame rate here. Oh, yeah. So this is one of those levels. So there's some weird things in this game that cer certain maneuvers, like slides, are easier to perform at lower frame rate, and riskies are easier to acquire at higher frame rate. So I very specifically have my monitor refresh rate set to 100 FPS so that I can get most of the riskies and slides uh, uh. in this level. It is kind of like a, I mean, 100 is kind of like a medium frame rate for this. Mm -hmm. um, in later uh, levels, Dama will actually be turning up the frame rate um, to uh, change other aspects of the game to make it possible to get higher scores more consistently. So, um, dangerous juke over there to pick up a secret banana. That one is so scary. I honestly... The scary, part of, the scary part of that one is the slide that I do before it, because you can actually push all the way into the wall and you're safe. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. realize that you could push all the way into the wall there. Yeah, so the actually going between the train and the wall is not hard, but getting the slide before getting to the wall is scary because I can hit the train. Yeah. Um, in this area, you have sort of like 2D movement. Like, you're, instead of moving back and forth, you can move up and down and back and forth. Um, and you can actually collide with some of the rocks in these segments. Okay. This Flashing is... lights! <laughs> yeah. So the reason the Dama is pausing periodically is that for the first few frames of each pause, it will continue to count your mashes. Um, so you can get a bunch of extra points out of uh, pause buffering those mashes. Um, I think normally you get something like 20 points out of that first mash. Um, yeah. But with well, pausing, first, you got... for normal people who mash, like there are some people yeah. in the community who are very, very fast mashers. And they get a lot more than 20 points. 20, not 20 points, but like the top, like the mo the highest mash. Yeah. Because you're, you're getting a point for each. Like you're getting the first one is one, the second one is yeah. two, the third one is Sorry. three. So like it, mashing is like quite a few points yeah. if you are very good at it. I meant I'm more not like very 20, good at it, but presses, I can exploit. But... <laughs> I'm not very good at mashing, but I, uh, I can exploit techniques <laughs> to yeah. make myself seem good at mashing. <laughs> Um, but it's still a pretty substantial difference. I think you got up to 50 counted presses there instead uh, of like 20, uh, 40, 40, instead but of still, 20 or 21. That's a huge difference. If you difference. do the math, if you do the math, that's quite a bit of a difference. Plus, yeah. there are thresholds that let you get different bonus points. So like, uh, if you do any mashing at all, you get a bonus of 100 at the end of it. If you get to 15, you get 250 points bonus. And if you get to 30, you get 500 points bonus. So the difference between me normally mashing there and getting to like 22 if I try really hard and getting to like 40 is quite a big difference in score. Yeah. In this I section, this like boss character was like... I was I, met, I was an boss oh, <laughs> It's okay. It's just one mash. The mash that really matters is at the end of the level. Yeah, that's I'd, I'd say one. while uh, while, while we're watching you get born again and again and again, shout out to Zodiac <laughs> uh, achievement. Uh, 
do you mind if I cut in with some donations because both chat yeah, and it. donations are popping off and giving you so much love right now and I want to <laughs> make sure you know this. So oh, okay. again, we are we are less than four hundred dollars away from getting that transonic gravity blindfolded in summer. What? Right? <laughs> and a quick shout out for a twenty dollar donation from Luciana who says, Go Dama! It's awesome to see a wonderful friend showcase a wonderful game for a wonderful cause. You got this! Oh, thank you, Luz! We also have Test Subject giving $5 and saying, I've seen Dama do Sayonara Wild Hearts on stream and it's super impressive. Really cool to see her perform at an event like this. Good luck, Dama! Oh, thank you, Test! We also uh, have a $50 donation really quickly from Zoku Bun who says it's been a chill Sunday to start Frost Patels, but let's turn up the heat a little and get that blindfolded transonic gravity met. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will turn it back to you two. So this is the big mash. So this normally is like 50 presses, and here that was what, 94? Yeah, I've done 98 before, but it's it's really hard actually, like physically. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever played a game where you have to like really mash to do a thing. It is really wearing on your wrists um, and your and your joints. Um, if I could so. remove one aspect of the score system of this game, it would be mashing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like it's the least interesting and also the physically hardest on me, like the most likely to give me a repetitive strain injury. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This heartbreak level on um, this third one actually does have some routing choices in it because there are different teleports that you can take. Um, and then up here, there's actually going to be a little like floating coin that's wo wobbling up and down. This is so annoying to get. <laughs> I hate that <laughs> coin. I hate that coin so much. <laughs> I finally figured out how to get it. But... Um, and then it mixes in with the timing prompts. The music in these is so cool. Um, so so Dama the there, yeah, yeah, I clip into the the root on the right to get some of the hearts, but then I don't go up the ramp so that I can st also get the hearts down the middle. It's like I have have my cake and eat it too kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of situations in this game where you are trying to either um, do a wiggle or kind of glide the line between a couple rows of hearts so that you can get both of them. Um, this level, this level is full of possible riskies off of these trees. Um, I'm but, chickening out of most of them because this is a live run. <laughs> yes, um, I mean you're 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 playing it safe uh, for a marathon setting. That's totally normal. Uh, but then you get to ride a stag, uh, which is really cool. And you have more of these like timing prompts while you're moving, which again, just honestly, really stressful. Um, Dama making it look extremely easy to collect these rows of hearts and getting all three of the hearts, uh, all three rows of hearts there. That's exactly the kind of thing that I was talking about, gliding the lines between those hearts. Here, um, Dama's gonna intentionally miss one of the jump prompts to collect a coin because the coin is worth a thousand points and more the, than a thousand. More than a thousand because you've already gotten one. Um, and the jump, the, the perfect there is worth 250. So the coin is much more valuable. Um, this next level has bigger flashing lights warning than usual. Uh, um, yeah, the next level uh, features a lot of like spatial warping as well. So if you get motion sick easily, yeah, you I'm might... gonna let the cutscene play out so people have a chance to look away if they. Yeah, so, yeah, this is like very trippy. So if this is making you feel uncomfortable, no sweat if you need to look away. It is a short level, yes. so you don't have to look away for long. Um, very soon, uh, Dama's going to be bouncing across a bunch of big mushrooms. Um, there's going to be a lot of diagonal cutting across these paths to uh, pick up uh, hearts optimally, um, because there are these ones that have three hearts on them, but those are not the routes that get you the big hearts. So you want to kind of cut across to get the maximum of points. Now we have these sort of Super Mario references. These heart, uh, these mushrooms making Dama progressively bigger so that she can get all of the different rows of hearts. Okay, uh, I just need to take a few seconds right now and change my frame rate. Yes. So in the next, this next level is much easier at higher frame rate. Mm -hmm. um, like, well, uh, I'm gonna cut in in these few minutes because sure. I've got two 
quick donations I want to mention to you, because again, the love is pouring in. Like a uh, hundred dollar donation from Calame, who says Dama has contributed so much to the score running community. She's below what we knew was possible out of the water. Thanks for bringing Aww, so thanks, much. <laughs> thanks for bringing so much to sign our wild hearts and for building such a wholesome following. And most of all, thanks for smashing all my world records. <laughs> but I also have a four hundred dollar donation from Doctor Goldfire, which means if I do the mental math correctly, my friend, you are going to be play playing Transonic Gravity blindfolded. Well, I hope I can put on a good show so of that. <laughs> So Chad, thank you so much for your wonderful donations to National, or National Women's Law Center and put some hype in chat for Dama and that blindfolded run that's coming up. All right, so that's this level- is so stressful. Yeah, um, so this level is full of these mechanical, these robot wolves. Um, and the robot wolves will run in front of you and then get to a point and turn around and fly back at you as bullets. Um, destroying the wolves has its own chain, an additional 25 points per wolf. And there are a lot of wolves in the level. They're worth a lot of points, but they also drop a row of hearts. So there was a lot of like trying to position correctly <laughs> to pick up the hearts after destroying the wolves and still get enough wolf kills. All right, I'm just quickly switching my frame rate back mm -hmm. because that level is the only one I need it to be higher for. Oh, my heart is pounding. That level <laughs> is so stressful. Um, it's worth like 100,000 points if I do it perfectly, but uh, so easy to die. So I only ended up getting, I think, like 80 something thousand points because I chickened out on a lot of <laughs> wolves at the end. <laughs> Probably correctly. Oh, I mean, can you look. tell? Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you, can you tell? Okay. <laughs> I only that... can you tell. It's an yeah, invalid it's run. A invalid run. So, um,. <laughs> The, the risky that Dama dove for at the very beginning of the level is super easy to die on. Um, and so a common a common meme is that uh, you basically just hear, can you tell, can you tell, over and over and over again. And if you don't get at least four can you tells, it's not a valid run. Yeah, but we of gotta course, scrap it. It doesn't we, count for anything. We got it first try, so. <laughs> I missed a bunch of hearts there, but I'm gonna try not to stress about it. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Uh, also, one thing that we forgot to mention when we were in the last boss level is that all of the boss levels have lyrics. Oh, yeah. And the songs are super good. Uh, so, uh, this gigantic Cerberus is going to drop these barrels uh, that can be, uh, one, they can kill you, um, but two, uh, they can be destroyed and they combo with any wolves that you destroy. Um, you, you can pick up a ton of... <laughs> None of them. <laughs> you got like one risky off the edge of each of them, which is totally safe and like normal. You can get a bunch of riskies, like one off of each missile in those if you slide just right, but it's super dangerous. Um, and I think you made the right call not like, not <laughs> diving for them. scary. <laughs> it is really scary. There are riskies that are like fully planned and I can like set up for them and they're very safe to go for. And then there are like, they're actually scary, like actually risky riskies. Um, these... Oh, that went perfectly! Nice! Yes. So those that boxes, we'd so actually, we didn't get a chance to talk about them in the previous level, but each of these boxes has nine hearts in them that automatically fly to you. Um, and you also get, what, as a hundred points for destroying the box in the first place? Um, so they're worth a lot of points. It's really important to destroy as many of them as possible. Um, and it's hard to get all of them in that segment. Dama like pulled it off flawlessly, but... I pioneered that route, actually. Like That's I, I awesome. was the first to discover that you can get all four boxes in that forest. You've pioneered a lot of stuff in this game. It's true. <laughs> There's not very many people who run it. I'm really kind of hoping that out of this showcase, there might be like, you know, one or two people who are like, maybe it would be fun to try to get some high scores in this game. And then maybe my some of my records will go away and I'll be so happy about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously considering it despite how salty you heard me in VC. <laughs> <laughs> On that last level, especially. Um, this game is super fun. Um, so, and it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. This is the best heartbreak level. It is definitely the best heartbreak level. Um, 
Instead of flying on a car, we're riding our bike up these stairs. There's just a lot more interesting stuff to do and like interesting little mechanics in this level um, and interesting routing choices. Um, also, the song is super good. I really like it. It's my favorite Heartbreak song for sure. Um, but this is actually maybe also a good time to like cut in with some donations. I think most of what's going on mechanically here is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, how about I cut in with, you have a $25 hype train going on right now? Oh it's just a casual $25 hype <laughs> train. So, uh, quick shout outs to some $25 donations from Tansen who says, do you want to skip this bit? Nah, I want to see if I'm blindfolded. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> uh, Will Wisp, also with $25, says, I'm so proud of you, Dama. We all are. And honestly, so is Thank Squirrel. You, <laughs> so is Squirrel611 with 25 and says, I have never seen Cyanar Wild Hearts before. And now I already want more. Here's 25 <laughs> to the blindfold incentive. Well, Squirrel, you are going to, well, you're going to see it. Dama's not going to see it. I'm not going to see it. But you're going to see it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this level has a bunch of turns in it. Um, all of these little like turn insignias, if you don't hit them, you run into a wall and you die. Um, yeah, I almost did that just now. Yeah, so that you, always, been great. you always go right. I missed uh, the quad boost. Ah, uh, you I can, can do it on its own boosters. all the time, but for some reason, when I'm in under pressure, it's just not possible. It's hard, it's hard to do. Uh, I'm going to let this cutscene play out because it's just so cool and it's pretty short. But the boss that we just came across gives us the strength card, which turns into a sword. My wife actually made me a replica of this sword, a tiny little wooden replica of it. <laughs> and then, not only do you have this awesome strength sword, but you use it to cleave the boss into two bosses. <laughs> and that leads us into... What is easily the coolest, the coolest level. level in the game? The coolest level, yeah. It's legitimately <laughs> my like second favorite level in this whole game. Confused me so much the first time I played oh it. But... Okay, so uh, what's going on here, because this is very visually confusing, is um, the bosses periodically will snap or clap. And when they do that, uh, the reality that you are seeing changes between these two different options. Um, and so you kind of have to read where you're going to be going next. And, and prepare now three for different, it. three different options. And now three different. Because each of these claps counts too. Uh, and so while this is a lot slower of a level than a lot of the other ones, it is really interesting, really, really cool. Also, I love this song. It's just kind of a nice, like, decompressed jam. Um, but otherwise, like, aside from all of the reality warping, this level's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I can definitely cut in with a quick donation and a quick announcement if yeah. possible. Perfect. All right, well, I have Dan T donating $25 and they say, I'd say good luck, but I know you don't need it. From the moment you joined our community so long ago, you started revolutionizing it. We never thought it could be pushed so far. Thank you and much love from Dan. Never die uh, thanks, wild. Dan. Lesson three. <laughs> And I do want to mention really quickly that we have opened up a new incentive, and that is going to be to pet Oink in our very next run, which is going to be Haven run by Nicole Goodnight. So if you meet this run, well, well, if we don't meet the run, we don't get to pet Oink, who is the bestest boy. But if you do meet the incentive, we're going to give that good Salamash a pet. And it's going to take $1,750 to make. And chat, we've already got people donating for it. So exclamation point donate. And let's pet that bestest boy, oink, friends. I want to see that pet. This is another one of those timing prompts while you're moving and trying to collect stuff things. Um, and especially because they have like buster swords, basically. Like, who do they think they are? Cloud Strike? <laughs> um, I found that part very stressful, personally. The Even swords though... only get more ridiculous, though. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's true. The swords, the swords get progressively more absurd. It's great. Here it comes. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Final Fantasy XIV raid mechanic, honestly. Like... <laughs> 
No, not me spit taking when you said Cloud Strife. (laughs) (laughs) I'm getting a couple of off screen slides here. Even though I can't see myself, I do still have some control over the bike. Yeah, and uh, Jamo was also able to set up for a slide off screen um, that was executed right when they came back on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of like really interesting navigation here, but now uh, the swords turn into planes. <laughs> and so does mine! Yeah! Sort of. <laughs> a little one. Um, there are a bunch of riskies that you can get off of the buildings in this part, but you don't really have any meaningful frame of reference for where the obstacles are. Um, so it's very hard to go for them. Extremely, extre- extremely dangerous riskies to go for for very little reward. It's, it's, yeah. it would only be worth doing that if I were on, like, if that was the only way that I could hit a PB. If I was like on PB pace, if I got like 50 more points, then I would go for that risky. <laughs> the riskiest of riskies. This is, I find, the most stressful heartbreak. Um. Oh, yes. Uh, this is, is this teleport spam? Yeah. This is teleport spam. Um, teleports are going to show up on the sides right here. Um, and Dama is going to get as many of those teleports as possible. Five before the first set of hearts. That was um, four, but you can get five. I I don't do it in a run where I'm not allowed to restart. <laughs> that's fair. Here, it looks like I'm missing hearts, but I discovered that while you're teleporting, your pickup radius is massive for some reason. So... Ah! The oh no! Not the banana! How dare I do that banana? banana. Um, unfortunately, right, like because because those pickups are cumulative, that's worth two or two thousand points, I think. Three, because three thousand. Three thousand, that's right. Because there's basically one fewer that you get and they, they add all together. Yeah, I screwed up the end of that level pretty badly, but uh we'll, we 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 live with it. We we cope. <laughs> um, so now we are using the chariot instead of the wheel of fortune to get around. Um, The Chariot has the interesting property that you can drift, and your individual drifts combo. Um, But generally speaking, drifts don't chain together, except they kind of do. There's a glitch that you can set up to make the uh, one drift continue into another. Yeah, Uh, I'll see if it happens, but it's for me, uh, it's not super consistent. It'll basically be RNG if it happens. Yeah, Um, but because it's so easy to gain points in this level by drifting, um, there's actually an achievement for completing this level with zero points. Uh, the exact opposite of what you want to do in every other level. <laughs> yeah, uh, routing that is kind of fun because you have to figure out, like, how do I get to the other side of this without actually turning during a turn? Because any kind of turn you do during a turn, a curve, will be a drift. Like, it takes very little to initiate a drift. I have not managed to accomplish it myself, um, but it is very fun to watch. No, it didn't happen. The, the drift glitch didn't happen, but that's okay. Yeah. My understanding is that there's like two people who can kind of get semi-consistent setups for it. Is that right? Yeah, but even those people are like, it feels like RNG. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. I was the first one to find it, but then I couldn't make it happen consistently. I'm pretty sure it had something to do with me playing on Switch, and it was like memory leaking like crazy. (laughs) And then I was like, wait, what happened? My score is like 2,000 points higher than it's supposed to be. Wait. (laughs) So in this weird little VR level that we're in right now, I just want to make sure that we get this little tidbit in there. Mm, Um, It it used to be everybody thought that this was optimized. You just pick up the things that you pick up. Um, And then... uh, a certain somebody who is playing the game right now. Uh, oh, I didn't just... discover the riskies. Oh, I discovered discover the, the double row of hearts. That's right. Someone, someone else had discovered <clears throat> the riskies. I still haven't actually gotten a risky to demonstrate, but you will get. You'll see them later in the level. You you, you can get, get riskies really, off some of the obstacles. Really close to the walls for it to yeah. risky. Um, like unreasonably close. <laughs> There is also that one section before where you can't pick up riskies off the moving walls, but you can get a double row of hearts as well. So yeah, it turned out I... that this level actually had more to it than everyone thought. 
Yeah, I was- I didn't know that you could get the double hearts. Nobody knew you could get the double row of hearts, but I was like, little hearts in this level are worth so few points that if I could skip getting one of the little hearts and get a risky instead, it would actually be worth it, which is, like, not true in any other level in the whole game. Yeah. But I was like, if I can just, like, skip getting one of these hearts and I get uh, risky instead, it'll be worth it. So I got really close to that wall, and what I discovered was you can't get a risky off the wall, but you do collect both rows of hearts. <laughs> so then everyone who wanted to improve their score had to rerun that level again. And oh, okay, this is when this is the first time we do the death glitch, which is another thing that I found. <laughs> So I'm going to collect some of these little hearts at the same time as dying on an obstacle. And since it's in the first checkpoint, it doesn't penalize me. But now my combo is starting from Four. the hearts that I collected as I died. Yeah. So it still resets your combo when you die. But then if you've collected hearts during death, it will add to your combo after you die. Yeah, and you don't get to keep the points from those hearts that you're collecting as you die, but you do get to keep that little combo bump. Yep, um, so now every heart in the level is worth three points more than it otherwise would be. Yeah, which adds up. Yeah, there are like 400, more than 400 hearts to pick up in this level, so that adds up to about 1,200 points. Um, this level also has a, a unique mechanic a little bit later. Um, Here, where... now. This... Oh, now, yes. Yep. Um, where you shoot. Again, this is auto-firing. You don't press anything. It just happens at regular intervals. And positioning yourself to get good scores from the comboing bonuses for, for killing me. <laughs> so these. scary! Oh my gosh. <laughs> While also picking up the hearts, it's, it's very stressful. And then there's this little maneuver. Just crawling under to get these hearts. It's so impressive. Every time I see it. My jaw just hit the ground thinking of how many times I died in that specific spot right there. That spot makes the entire level. Like, everything else is pretty much fully set. Yeah. It's that, those, like, 12, 20 seconds, or I don't even know how many seconds it is, but it's all, like, this, all of the score variation pretty much comes just from that section. <laughs> Yeah, on the thankfully, actual... It's, thankfully, it's pretty easy to practice because you can just run into an obstacle to get it to start over, that section. And mm -hmm. that checkpoint is pretty long. So you can die repeatedly to practice. <laughs> There's no automatic practice mode in this game. You can't just, like, skip to a certain checkpoint. So if I ever want to be able to practice a section... Uh, I have to find a way to die while I'm still in that section. Um, which is kind of funny because on Laser Love, I'm pretty sure that that has resulted in my uh, route being as dangerous as possible for the most points. Because it's easier to practice dangerous routes than safe ones. <laughs> that is... You've said that to me before, and I, it's just it's funny every time. So this is the actual boss encounter of the level. These rockets can kill you. Um, and in a little bit, we're gonna get our shot power back um, and you will be able to shoot them and like take points off of them. Um, but optimizing those is very hard. Like, it's just, it's already super stressful. To I didn't with quite the get to 30 there. Oh, that's... But that's okay. We're over 800k here, which means that if I play well for the rest of the game, we're on 2 million point pace. Yay! Yay! But oh. that's not a guarantee. I, I think probably just given the pressure that I'm under for having to perform this in front of many, many people, <laughs> uh, it's going to result in like... Well, if I don't die in the final level, it will result in like 1.9 something. That is still a uh, which is still over 400 point, 400,000 points more than you need for a wild rank for the album. Um, but if I die there, I'll probably end up with around 1.5, 1.6, which is still wild rank as well. <laughs> well, this might is... I cut in with a really quick... Uh, yeah, 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 this is a good perfect. time. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, because this is a, a really, really awesome story. I want to make sure uh, everyone hears it. So Danny Beasy st sent in $50 donations with the comment of, uh, Sinar Wild Hearts was a game that helped me to come out of the closet with myself and family. The journey of grief, transformation, and finding yourself resonates so much with myself and so many of my LGBTQ friends and allies. So happy to see this game ran for such an awesome cause. And Danny, thank you so much for that wonderful, courageous story and your absolutely super kind donation. That's so lovely. I've heard okay. that so many people say that this game either helped them through heartbreak or some aspect of self-identity or things like that, that even though somehow, even though the story of the game pretty much is only told indirectly, other than at the very beginning, at the very end. Oh, sorry, just a second. Um, this is the level that I will be running blindfolded after. <laughs> after the run so if you want to see what it's like uh now's the time to pay attention it's a very fast level it's gonna go by really quickly so um yeah this is the one that i will have to do without being able to see it uh <laughs> but yeah somehow even though the story is told mostly like metaphorically i i know many many people who are brought to tears at the end of the game somehow and me, myself included, the first few times. And sometimes now as well. I mean, it, the the imagery in this is very powerful. Um, even without, like, text or a, like, spoken narrative. This uh, is a cutscene, but I let it play out because it puts me out of position if I skip it. Um, this little, uh, death is going to activate these, uh, lightning fences. The lightning fences, you can just kind of hang out near them and get a bunch of riskies. Um, and the trick of it is, uh, getting those riskies while still, uh, collecting all of the things that you need to collect. Um, because if you don't take these riskies, you get so many of them off of being near the fences. Um, you leave a lot of points on the table, but the collectibles are still the collectibles. Uh, so it's this uh, really interesting balancing act in this level. Um, and also the fences can kill you. Like you get riskies off of them because they are obstacles. However, during the blindfolded run, uh, the fences are really useful to me because I can hear in either ear which side is closer to like which crackling is louder and how loud it is. So that really helps me uh, identify exactly where I am on okay. the road. Um, this, we use Temperance to get a bow. It's the first level that includes archery. There is a death glitch here as well, but it's kind of finicky, so I'm only going to give it like three tries. And I got it first try! Yay. Nice, nice! <laughs> Casual Dama W. Um, so you get combos off of the archery depending on how many things you hit. Um, there's small, medium, large, and extra large combos, and each combo type has a range of kills that gets you that combo. Um, so usually what you want to do is clear out um, the minimum, uh, to leave the minimum amount for your uh, your largest combo that you're going to get. Um, and also pick up several other smaller combos along the way. Um, because like I'm gonna shoot four here to get a medium and then wait for the next wave to come to combine with the rest of that to get an extra large. Extra large, exactly. Um, because otherwise, if you kill more than you need for the combo without going up to the next tier, you're just leaving points on the table. Um, if it's possible to combine into a larger combo. Very short nice. level. Nice. You're already at one million. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is the first level I found the death glitch on. Uh, this, this boost, if you run into a post at the same time as hitting the boost, you get a hundred boosts as you die, and then it's worth two hundred after that. So that's yeah. every boost in the level is now worth a hundred more points than it was. Um, it is it is really amazing that like all of the stuff that you have found in this game, and that, honestly that the community as a whole has found in this game. Um, I don't think that I would have looked at this and like gone hunting for or even necessarily notice these opportunities for higher and higher scores. 
It's really cool to see all of that. Basically, it's just a matter of playing it a lot and noticing when something is weird. Like yeah. noticing when something something doesn't add up, something strange just happened. I don't understand why I have this score that I have or I don't understand why my combo is what it is right now. And then like noticing those details and then doing some investigative processes to figure out what happened. Yeah. Oh, um, I just, since I just noticed it, in the tunnels in here, every time you make a full rotation in one direction, like you have to go an entire way clockwise or an entire way counterclockwise, you get a 50 point spinny bonus. Mm -hmm. It's like wearing a skirt, but <laughs> on a motorbike. <laughs> While fighting for your life. While fighting for your life. <laughs> also, it has pockets. <laughs> I, I can't unhear that now. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Um, actually, now might be a good time for another donation. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have continuing the $25 donation train. Scoots also says, join the $25 hype train. Dalma is a treasure. Less than three. Oh, thank you, Scoots. <laughs> We have a $25 donation from Boring Cactus that says, So glad to see Cyanar back on the GDQ feed. JPJ and I are super glad to be watching. Oh, and, my goodness. <laughs> and we have a $5 donation from Aiko who says, Oh my god, hi Dama! Hi. You and Alex are two of my favorite Fatals. I go put the, the buy heart in there. Uh, oh. You are so good at this game, and good luck at Blindfolded. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you punch death in the face several times. Um, and then death gets a little sick at you and you take a ride on it for some reason. <laughs> that, to Sorry, me, Tori, I totally forgot about the vomit <laughs> warning, but hopefully it's like cartoonish <laughs> enough that nobody was set off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get one more good punch in here. Um, and then something a little weird is going to happen. All right, medium, small, and everything oh, yeah, you else. Get all of those hearts. The boxes don't appear until all of the hearts are gone, so you can't combine them for a larger combo. Yeah. Um, this looks so scary, but you can just kind of uh, go. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> All right, this part is legitimately scary. <laughs> it's not actually that hard, but... It is scary because you can so easily miss a row of those hearts at the end that it's the last thing you need to do in the level. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's also, I think, I think it's a little easy to like flub one of the two archery points that you need to not get smacked into oblivion, um, personally, but I guess... Yeah, you kind of just need to know where they are ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, now we get a boss that's combining all five of our bosses that we've faced off so far. Yeah. Um, so uh, the tarot cards that are floating around the boss um, are actually returning to it periodically. So it's always the same five cards. You can get riskies off of the cards but you're only allowed to take a single risky off of each individual obstacle. Um, so you can only get five riskies off of the cards total. Um, and that actually gives you a lot of time in the level to pick and choose where you're going to get your riskies. Um, you don't necessarily have to like hang out next to the boss while it's spinning or something. Um, for these bullets, Dama is pause buffering the riskies uh, because there is a limit to how often you can get a risky, and pause buffering helps clear out the cooldown. Um, there's another shot segment later on where Dama will not be pause buffering the riskies. Uh, it's actually this, um, because this whole section is a little uh, disorienting and it's dangerous. Um, and you can pause buffer yourself into a card, for example. Um, So, uh, ooh, hello. Uh, so we're in another one of these spinny areas, but now shots are being fired. Uh, and you do kind of have to bait the shots right coming into this uh, to avoid getting hit as you go over for the hearts. In this section, 
a lot of players, myself included, will like do wide sweeps side to side. You miss a lot of parts that way. So Dama did these gentle little nudges back and forth. Another archery section, um, again, combining the uh, little floating eyes with the boxes that are coming up and down to try and get larger combos. Um, but the timing aspect of it is really important because like the skulls, these things will eventually fly at you and kill you if you leave them alive long okay, enough. Okay, so all do... three extra larges, very good. Nice. Stress, 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 stress. Okay, these are like wolves, but also there are these card obstacles here. Um, so they're, they're similar to that. They're just gonna fly at you like bullets. I let more of those go than I would have liked, but it was very scary, so I'm just glad I didn't die. Yeah, that's very legit. Um, it is possible to get riskies off those bullets in the previous section, but it's very, very difficult and not worth trying to do on an analog stick. I'm going to let this cutscene play. We Give turn back into our original self, and then all the cards combine together into... Us. Sort us, of. But the boss, kind of? <laughs> yes. So now we have like little rehashes of all of the boss segments um, while we're kind of on our skateboard again. Um, these are much lighter than the original boss segments. And we're going to charge up for a punch. We're going to charge up for a punch. We're going to charge up for a punch. And smooch. Yay, smooch. I really, I like to like interpret this segment as, um, as the fool like forgiving herself for like something like taking all of that like anger and heartbreak that has been portrayed and I kind of take it as like if you interpret the bosses as like ex relationships then I feel like when you know someone and you care about them a lot and they're a big part of your life Hang on, sorry. I have to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. This area is... This segment is very difficult. Okay. Nice when they're a big part of your life, they kind of form part of your who you are. And that can be hard to grapple with when that's not a relationship that you have positive feelings about anymore. So mm. I feel like these different... I mean, everyone can addict their own interpretation, of course. But I view it as like, these are sort of like the aspects of, of our own identity that were, that are still kind of formed from who we knew and we don't have good feelings about anymore, but they are still part of who we are. So we have to come to terms with that and accept that that's still part of, then the voice part of our identity. But and I know there's like a million different ways to, <laughs> to take it. Um, and honestly, like, the riding a dragon is obviously a metaphor for yeah, riding a dragon, very, which is very which is, symbolic, yeah. Um, yeah. significant. <laughs> <laughs> um, these rings of hearts, you get uh, 500 points increasing for everyone that you pass through, and also all of the hearts that are around it. And because we have not died, look, these combos, every single heart is worth over 800 points already. There are so many points in this part of the level, you want to hit all of these rings, but they're very forgiving. If you even glance them, you get the whole thing for free. Um, it's, uh, it's a really, like, nice, big, sweeping end here, uh, to this. And one final smooch, because you can't not kiss a dragon, let's be honest. Also, low-key shout-out to the fact that Queen Latifah is the narrator for this game. Right. Oh, and yeah. the story behind that, oh my gosh. There's a funny story, yeah. <laughs> but, um... Are, are, we tell, are we telling this? I don't know the story, so if somebody wants to tell it. <laughs> uh, I can't right now, but okay. if you know the, it, you can the tell TL, it. The TLDR is the devs shot their shot. Um, they wanted Queen Latifah to, to narrate this, but they didn't think she would, so they sent her a message, and Queen Latifah got the message and was like, yes, absolutely not, yes, 100% yes. I will narrate this. And then all of a sudden, casual Queen Latifah narration. <laughs> Aw, only 1.9 million. Oh wait, no. you get a free hundred thousand points. That's a two million. Two million. You did. Three stars in front of a GTQ audience. In a town 
That was oh. amazing. I'm so happy. You did so well. And that's time, Jeez. by the way. That heart Jeez. was time. Oh. So normally when you would run album arcade and go for a high score, you would be restarting every time you mess up. You can restart individual levels, you just can't go back to previous ones. So you would like run a level until you got a score that you were happy with, then move on. Um, so to do that, <laughs> one of the very first reasons I ever started streaming was because I was going for a 2 million point album arcade. Um, <laughs> And I had no streaming setup whatsoever, so I was playing on my Switch on my television. I had my phone pointed at my TV hanging from my ceiling fan. <laughs> and this was one of my first times streaming any kind of video game on Twitch ever. <laughs> and uh, so it feels kind of like coming full circle to... Oh, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> to come full circle and like do it in front of a big audience without even having to retry any levels is... is for a game that's so special to me is really <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> you did such a great job. And thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you. Um, oh, I'm glad to have you. It was very fun going through the game with you and sort of like getting to like talk about my hyperfixation nonstop for hours. <laughs> uh, um, how are we doing for time? Do I need to skip the credit sequence or are we okay? Um... We are, uh, uh, let's this see here, nice we will, <laughs> will ask our wonderful uh, tech team producers behind the scenes, also shout out to tech and producers behind the scenes uh, while we figure that out, but I think for now we can let it play for just a little bit, because I just wanted to let you know that when you watch this back, the amount of love that you've had this entire run and the hype and everybody is behind you so much for this. Uh, the the donation trains have kept going. Like, oh, we've, I'm so glad. <laughs> we've got like, a $25 donations from Maggie who says, Kodama go, this girl rocks. And then- Maggie is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, Maggie, for that. Um, Elsh also donated $25 and said, hi, Dama, Elsh here. You're doing hi, amazingly Dama squad hype. So yeah, while you're you're you can get set for the uh, the blindfolded transonic gravity run, which all y'all wonderful friends in chat donated for for such an amazing cause, National Women's Law Center. Um, I do want to remind you, in the meantime, uh, that we do have that pet oink incentive. That is, we got a ways to go, chat, and I know you can do it. There's gonna be so much hype behind that run. And uh, it's just gonna be a fun, cozy run of Haven, if you haven't seen that game. Like, this is legitimately the cozy block of Monday, and it's so beautiful, it's so wonderful. Um, make sure you're putting your donations towards that current incentive, exclamation point, donate, and choose the pet oink incentive. We need to get 17 50 and we got some work to do, which I know we can do. It's very um, fashionable, sleep mask, blindfold <laughs> situation. Hey, it works, it works. If uh, I had, had more time, I would have tried to like make a mask, like the fool's mask in the game <laughs> and wear that for this, but uh, <laughs> um, I I've do... been sick. I've been fighting off a cough. I didn't, I didn't have time. <laughs> I do want to chime in real quick and um, just uh, call out for uh, producer, host, um, and myself uh, that since Dama will be relying very heavily on audio cues for this, for the duration of the blindfolded run, it's not very long, it's like a minute long, um, just total silence. Will do. Yeah. A minute and 20 seconds, I think, where I really, really need to be able to hear everything. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, in fact, like, it's a little bit awkward with my blindfold because it kind of pushes my headphones out very slightly and I can't hear quite as well as I otherwise would be. But anyway, here we go. Hopefully good I can luck. put on a good show. I've done a lot of practice, but there are still some things that can go wrong. So hopefully, hopefully it's a smooth run. We've, we've got your back, Dama. Good luck.
It doesn't cost me anything to die here because I've already died. That's so sad. I can, if we have time, I can do it again. I don't know how the next runner situation is, but I can run it. I have gotten wild rank numerous times blindfolded, but one thing goes wrong, it's hard to recover. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, we can definitely get one more go. not wild but at least gold oh so close to wild rank though i clipped out teleport that i didn't mean to clip right before the second coin in the level um it's hard you don't really have any kind of point of reference for exactly how far to push towards the middle of the track where there's a one lane gap to go through between two teleports to get the coin so it's really easy to accidentally hit either side teleport and yet you still <laughs> only came in like 10,000 points short of Wild Rank, so. Not 10,000, like, it was, what did I have? Like 72 something there? That yeah, was like 1,000 one short. Oh yeah, oh 1,000, yeah, not 10,000. <laughs> I can yeah. do math, I swear. I, I, know <laughs> how, I know how numbers work. I, I would normally do math as well, but my jaw's on the ground, I'm trying to pick it up, and chat <laughs> is just popping off for seeing oh, that. Really? <laughs> I <laughs> like, feel that so bad was... that I wasn't, that I didn't get the wild rank for it, but hopefully people can see how it would have been possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm still seeing, yeah, still so absolutely amazing, stunning, flawless, impressive. Uh, <laughs> just again, casual Dama W. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> awesome. We're our own worst critic, I know. <laughs> here, I'm here. constantly a perfectionist with this game, so like I can feel every little mistake that I make. <laughs> my core <laughs> yes thank you so much to both of you for that oh my gosh amazing sign our wild hearts run i've been so excited for it leading up to this um please tell all of our friends in chat and watching the vods where they can find you two for sure um i'm dama plays games on twitch uh, and if you want to try running Sayonara and get some high scores, you can hop in the Sayonara Wild Hearts Discord. There's a speedrunning server and a like and a just general kind of interest plus score hunting server. Um, I'm in both, <laughs> but I love, love, love to help people figure out routes for high scores in this game like more than anything if somebody dms me and is like hey how do i get wild rank on this level i'll be like i got you <laughs> let's hop in a vc let's do it <laughs> so yeah uh however if anybody's interested i would be so thrilled if even like one or two people were like hey i'm gonna try and see what kind of scores i can get now after seeing that um that would be so amazing i would love it <laughs> Agreed. And Sabera, where can and they Sabera. find you? 
Oh, uh, yeah, uh, you can, you can find me at Severa Messia. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, just like it says on the screen. Um, I used to do a lot of speedrunning stuff. I'm, like, starting to dip my toes back into casual speedrunning. And, uh, since Dama has been teaching me Sayonara Wild Hearts, I think I will probably try to at least get somewhere with the score hunting for it. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you again so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure uh, commentating. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad. It sounds like people enjoyed watching. I'm, I was really excited that it got accepted for Frost Fatales. This is definitely the biggest event that I've run Sayonara for, um, and definitely the most money I've raised for charity ever. So <laughs> I'm really thrilled that people seem to to get a kick out of it. 